we're going to start looking at factoring now. So we did a lot with the distributive property. Um, I want to just show you real quick. So when you have something like 3 parentheses x plus 2, when you distribute, what operation is this? Well, when you distribute, it's multiplication, right? So we're now going to go the opposite direction. So if I want to get if I want to go the other direction, the opposite of multiplication would be division. And so what I need to figure out here is I need to figure out what the greatest common factor is of um, these different problems. And then I am going to write it out front, and we're going to divide each term by that. So let's take a look at this. 8x squared and negative 4x. Let's just start with the numbers. 8 and 4. What is the largest factor that they have in common? It's going to be a 4, right? And now let's talk about the variables. x squared and x. What is the biggest one that they both have in common? Well, they both have an x in common. So the GCF of this expression right here is going to be 4x. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a 4x out in front. I'm going to make my parentheses. And now what we're going to do is we're going to divide each of these terms by 4x. And now we're going to write the result inside the parentheses. 8 divided by 4 is 2. x squared divided by x is x minus, what's 4x divided by 4x? Anything divided by itself is 1. You can always check to make sure you did this right by foiling and or distributing and seeing if you get back to what you started with. And check this out. 4x times 2x is 8x squared. 4x times negative 1 is negative 4x. And you can see that we got back to where we started. Um, so if it asks us to factor, this is as far as we need to go. So let's go down here and take a look at b. What is the GCF going to be? Well, you see I have a 3, a negative 6, and a 3. So what's the biggest factor I can take out of these? I can take out a 3. This one has an x. But the other two don't, so I can't take an x out. This one's got a y, but the other two don't, so I can't take a y out. So the GCF for this one is just the number 3. So we're going to write a 3 out front. We're going to open our parentheses, and we're going to divide each of these terms by 3. 3x divided by 3, the 3s are going to cancel out, and we're just going to be left with x squared. Negative uh, 6y divided by 3 is negative 6 divided by 3 is a negative 2, and our y comes along. And then negative 3 divided by positive 3 is a negative 1. Again, you can check to see if we multiply back in, do we get what we started with? 3x squared minus 6y minus 3. All right, we got a lot more going, down, going on down here in this one. But let's first start by trying to figure out what the GCF would be. What would our GCF of this one be? Well, we've got a 12, a 16, and a 24. So to figure out what the largest number that would go in, let's think about a factor. Well, 2 could go into all of these, but I think we can go any bigger. Would 6 work? Well, 6 doesn't divide into 16, so that's not going to work. I think the GCF, the number that's going to divide into all of these, um, is going to be a 4. So 4 is the number for the GCF. Now let's take a look at the variables. You see I've got an x to the 4th, an x squared, and an x to the third. I've got to be able to take it out of all of them, so x squared is the smallest one that they all have in common. So I can take out an x squared. And now let's take a look at the y's. You see I have a y to the second, a y to the second, and a y to the third. Since I've got to be able to take it out of all of them, I'm going to take out a y to the second. And finally, we have a z to the third, a z, and a z squared. So I'm going to go ahead and take out a z from each of these. Again, I can't go any bigger than that because I've got to be able to take it out of all three of them. And I can't take out a z squared or anything from this one. So now what we do is, again, we write the what, our GCF out for x squared, y squared, z. And now what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and open up our set of parentheses. And we're going to divide each of these terms by 4x squared, y squared, z. Divide this one by 4x squared, y squared, z. And then this one by 4 
x squared, y squared, z. Now, let's take it one step at a time. So um, over here, we have 12 divided by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And then we have x to the fourth divided by x squared right here. So what we do is we go ahead and we subtract those exponents. So 4 minus 2, we get x to the second. y squared divided by y squared, those are going to cancel out. And now z to the third divided by z to the first, we, remember we subtract those exponents. So uh, 3 minus 1 gives us z to the second. Now let's take these the second set, so um, 16, negative 16 divided by 4 is going to give us a negative 4. x squared divided by x squared, those are going to cancel out. y squared divided by y squared, those are going to cancel out. z divided by z, those are also going to cancel out. So all we have for that term is negative 4. And now our last one is we have a 24, a positive 24 divided by a positive 4. 24 divided by 4 is a positive 8, then x to the third divided by x squared. Remember, we sac uh, subtract those exponents, so 3 minus 2, we get x to the first power. And then y to the third divided by y squared is going to also be y to the first power. And finally, z squared divided by z to the first is going to again be z to the first power. Go ahead and close our parentheses because we factored everything out. And that's going to be our answer right there.